Suppose we want to solve this differential equation. Derivative of some function of x, f of x, is that function times 3x squared. Let's go over a technique involving infinite series. But before we do that, you might endeavor to solve this differential equation by inspection. If you have enough mental flexibility, you might stare at it long enough and ask yourself, what function of x times 3x squared equals its own derivative. Now one thought you might have is that when functions equal their derivative or some function of their derivative, they tend to be exponential. So I'm going to expect a, probably an exponential solution here. You can go ahead and try e to the x cubed. And sure enough, you take the derivative of e to the x cubed, you have 3x squared times e to the x cubed. But let's try to see if we can come up with that as a series solution. So to do that, I'm going to write it this way. For expedience, I'll write df by dx as f prime, put everything on one side, and proceed with a series type solution. In a series type solution, what you do is you replace f of x with an infinite series. And you replace derivatives of f with the derivative of the infinite series. We have to expand f of x in a power series. So the derivative of f can be written as a power series, as well as the second derivative. There's no second derivative in this differential equation, but if it were a second order equation, you would want to have this. Now you might wonder, does the second derivative have powers of x to the minus 2 and x to the minus 1? No, because when n equals 0, the coefficient is 0. When n equals 1, the coefficient is still 0. And so the first term in that expansion happens when n equals 2. So the approach is to take these series expansions and substitute them into the differential equation, which I think is more conveniently written like that and solve by grouping the terms in the same power of x. So let's write that differential equation with these series solutions inserted in. First of all, there's f prime, sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, and then minus 3x squared times this series expansion of f. And that equals 0. I think it's more convenient to write this, and I'll squeeze it in up here, as a single sum. So sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Do you see that that's the same thing? You have x squared, and you have x to the n, so you have x to the n plus 2. And those all are the same value of n in the series expansion, so I can combine these two series in the following way. We're going to solve this by equating coefficients of like powers of n. We're going to group those terms into the same power. So the first thing I want to do is find a general relationship between the coefficients. If you look at the series, there are two terms. One of them is to x to the n minus 1, and the other is to x to the n plus 2. So what we're doing now is very specific to this problem. Other problems will have different observations than what we're about to make. I see uh, two terms where one of them has x that is three powers higher than the other term. So let's just pick one power of x and look at it. Let's pick the power x to the n plus 2. So that we have this minus 3 a sub n from the second term. And from the first term, when you have x to the n plus 2 and you have that same power, this coefficient must be n plus 3, so a sub n plus 3. You see how a sub n and a sub n plus 3 are going to have the same power of x. And then you have this n plus 3 in front. And so a single power of x is going to have this be true about its coefficients. Let's make good use of that. I'll rewrite it slightly. a sub n plus 3, any particular coefficient, is equal to 3 divided by n plus 3 times the coefficient from 3 powers ago. So the general approach to solving these kinds of equations is to group the terms in the same power of x. I'll even write that down. 
Let's just do a few. And we'll start to see a pattern emerge. And we looked at all the x to the 0 terms. So all the terms up here that have x to the 0. And remember, there are no terms where you have 1 over x or 1 over x squared. Because when n is 0, this first term is 0. When n is 1, then you have x to the 0. So the second term doesn't have an x to the 0 at all. But the first term does. When you have x to 0, n is 1. But that has to equal 0 because there's no second term to add to it in order to get 0. So it itself has to be 0. What about the x to the 1 power? So inspect this again. With the x to the 1 power, you know, same story. The second term still produces nothing. You know, it doesn't have an x to the 1 term because n starts at 0. x squared is the lowest order term. So all we can say is that when oh, from the first term. But x to the 1 is when n equals 2, so you have 2a2. Two, but then the second term has nothing is equal to 0, so 2a2 two times x has to be 0, so a2 has to be 0. So look at the x squared term. When you have x squared, in the first term, n has to be 3, 3a three sub 3. And in the second term, if you have x squared, n equals 0, minus 3a sub 0 equals 0. All right, we've gotten some information here, and that information is that a3 equals a0. That's actually consistent with this expression, right? a sub 3 means n equals 0, is 3 over 0 plus 3 is 1, equals a0. I'll write out some patterns here then. Apparently, we have a1 equals 0. I'm going to write them all out. a1 equals 0. a2 is 0. a3 is something I don't know what it is. It's a0. We have a general constant for all of these. Following this equation in the box up here, a4 must be 0. I don't have to set things up to find out because a1 is 0, a4 is 0. And because a2 is 0, a5 is 0. What about a6? Look at the box. a6 means n equals 3, so 3 over 3 plus 3, so that's 1 half. a3. That's the condition defined by this box. a6 is 3 over 3 plus 3 times a3, and a3 equals a0. a7 must be 0. a8 must be 0. Let's just do one more, a9. You can follow the box. It's not going to be 0 because a6 is not 0, but it's 3 over 6 plus 3, or 3 ninths, a6. And since a6 is 1 half a0, that's 1 6 a0. I think now we're ready to write a solution. Just write out the power series expansion. I'll write it here to start with. It's a0 plus a1 and a2 are 0. a3x cubed, a4 and a5 are 0. a6x to the 6, a7 and a8 are 0. a9x to the 9th, and so forth. Now this is not as simplified as it gets, so let's put in these coefficients. And so we have a0 plus a3 is a0, plus a6, which is 1 half a0, plus a9, which is 1 sixth a0. Factor out the a0. Are you following this? Do you recognize what's in these square brackets? Compare it to a power series expansion of the exponential. e to the, let's call it u, is 1 plus u plus 1 half u squared plus 1 six u cubed plus dot dot dot. Do you see how they compare? Apparently f of x is a0 times, so what is this expansion? It looks like it's the exponential of x cubed. And we have used a series expansion to solve a linear differential equation. Let's use the same approach to solve a more complicated differential equation. It's a second order differential equation, which includes this kind of funny uh, coefficient, l times l plus 1. You might be recognizing that as angular momentum. And this, in fact, is the Schrodinger equation for the radial solution of a hydrogen atom, which is why we're doing this right now. 
Let's go ahead and write down these same series expansions for f of x, f prime of x, and f double prime of x. Insert these in to the differential equation. And I'm actually going to write all of that out right now. So first the uh, second derivative. So I was 1 minus x squared times the second derivative expansion. Now we'll go minus 2x times the first derivative of the expansion. And then we have this funny constant term times the expansion itself. So we'll group the powers of x. Let me deal a little bit with this first term here so we can see those powers of x. So let's break this apart into its two terms. So that's a lot more writing, but here we go. It's a more convenient way to have this series so that we can more readily see the powers of x. So I'm going to just say what they are and see if you can follow along with all of this. First, let's find the coefficients of all constant terms. So if I look at the very first term, 2a2, right? Because when n equals 2, I have x to the 0. That's a constant term. The next one has no constant term because you start off with n equals 0. There's no term for n equals 0. And the same here. But the fourth term also has a constant when n equals 0. It would be x to the 0 does not have 0 coefficient in the last term. It's look at the coefficients of the linear x term. And I'm just going to keep inspecting each one of these. This first one. When you have the linear term, n must be 3. So you have a sub 3, and 3 times 2 is 6. So you have 6 a sub 3 out of that first term. So the second term still has no term. x equals to 1 is when n equals 1. And there you have 2 times 1 times a sub n with a minus sign. And the next one as well. Every coefficient in that last sum has l times l plus 1 in it. Look at the x squared. And now I'm just going to go quickly and see if you can come up with the same things. And you might be seeing some patterns emerge. Can you see some patterns? Because we want to write out the general x to the n expansion. Well, let's take a look at a few things here. You notice this 30. 30 is 5 times 6. 30 seems to be 4 plus 2 times 4 plus 1. 6 times 5 is 30. And this is the x to the fourth. So I think a pattern will emerge, because if you look at the 20, 20 is 4 times 5, 5 times 4, 3 plus 2, 5 times 4, 3 plus 1. Then look at the 12, 12 is 4 times 3, or rather 2 plus 2 times 2 plus 1. 6 is 3 times 2, or rather 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 1. You see the pattern for this first coefficient is always the power that x is raised to plus 2 times the power that x is raised to plus 1. And look at the next term, 12, which is 4 times 3. 4 times 4 minus 1. See, 8 is 2 times 4. 6 is 2 times 3. 4 is 2 times 2. So this coefficient just seems to be 2n. This coefficient is just l times l plus 1, but this coefficient, let's write out the pattern, it seems to be n times n minus 1. And this one seems to be n plus 2 times n plus 1. Now we have a uh, pattern here. Grouping all of the coefficients for x to the n, adding them together and setting them to 0, gives you n plus 2 times n plus 1 times a sub n plus 2 minus 
So that's this, what you get out of the second term there. Minus, and then always plus. Well, that's a very potent uh, combination. I'm just going to write it finally in a different form. I'm going to say a sub n plus 2 is n squared minus n. That's the recursion relation for the coefficients. You often see it published in a rearranged form. You can confirm for yourself that this is the same thing. That's a form that you usually see in quantum mechanics texts. So there are two things we don't know. We don't know a sub 0, and we don't know a sub 1. And we don't have a way to relate them to each other. So our final solution has, in general, a sub 0 and a sub 1 in it. And you can just write the expansion. f equals a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, where a2 is all this stuff. I'm not going to write it out. But these are the expansion coefficients for the general solution that f equals sum starting at 0 of a sub n x to the n. Those go in there. Okay, and that's the solution. Those are the Legendre polynomials, by the way.